హలో అండ్ వెల్కమ్ టు ప్యూర్ ఎక్స్పీరియన్సెస్ ఆన్లైన్ సత్సంగ్ దిస్ సత్సంగ్ ఇస్ అన్ ఆపర్చునిటీ ఫర్ ఎవ్రీబడి టు మీట్ అండ్ డిస్కస్ ద స్పిరిచువల్ మ్యాటర్స్ యూ కెన్ ఆస్క్ యువర్ క్వశ్చన్స్ అండ్ గెట్ యువర్ డౌట్స్ క్లియర్ దిస్ ఇస్ స్పెషలీ యువర్ యూస్ఫుల్ ఫార్ దోస్ హూ ఆర్ న్యూ టు ద పాత్ ఆఫ్ నాలెడ్జ్ అండ్ రిక్వైర్ సమ్ గైడెన్స్ అండ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ వెరీ యూస్ఫుల్ ఫార్ దోస్ హూ ఆర్ డూయింగ్ ద ప్రోగ్రామ్ ద పాత్ ఆఫ్ నాలెడ్జ్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ సో ఆల్ క్వశ్చన్స్ ఆర్ మోస్ట్ వెల్కమ్ Arvind has a question why has bharat been at the forefront of spiritual seeking and progress this is a big misconception the spirituality is found in every part of the world here there is a specific kind of spirituality that has survived a long time that's all in the other places on the same planet same knowledge happened many times throughout the history and this will continue to happen and not only on earth this is happening in the total universe which means the total manifestation is like this whatever you call as india came into being only 70 75 years ago otherwise there was no such country bharat so how can we say that it is in f- forefront these locations the geographies they keep changing what does not change is the knowledge and it appears wherever there is prosperity peace education intelligence etc and that these conditions can happen anywhere any time so certain places at certain times they look like that they are in the forefront but then they disappear some other places come in forefront they disappear and there are certain times where the knowledge is more than normal and there are certain times where knowledge is very less so this is the bigger picture this is how it is happening and this is how it will ha- keep happening Rahul is asking why do criteria of truth keep on changing for normal people is there a pattern for this people adopt uh, that criteria which is according to their own intelligence and requirement if the requirement is not so strict then they go with the simplest possible it is in the newspapers everybody is saying it your friend is telling it and they say that yes that can be a good criteria for truth because probably the requirement is not so strict but if somebody tells you these people please invest in this and this share or company you will get a good return buy this property it is good then they do not believe it blindly most of the people they have that that much intelligence to check because now the requirement is strict they must use a better criteria and this is what seekers also do in day to day life there is no other way this is almost like a dynamic truth that truth can become false any time when it is a question of knowing the ultimate reality then you must adopt the most strict criteria strict as possible where there is no chance of a mistake and that is why we use this ultimate criteria for truth amazing thing about the about the criteria that we use criterion is that it puts everything in the category of false except you so this is the heaviest possible classification of true and false so probably the pattern is like this that the more important it is the stronger is your criteria the stronger is your checking you need to check it thoroughly precisely otherwise anything goes and you will find that more than 90% of the people their lives are anything goes it does not really matter for these people what is true what is false is simply going on so that is why the ordinary life happens in total falsehood and a seeker also need not worry too much when it comes to the worldly life you can also have a dynamic kind of truth there but if your goal is finding the ultimate truth then you must refine your criteria the justification for any criteria is that it must be applicable in all contexts it should not change anywhere it should not change with the situation should not change with new information should not change with time and place because if your criterion changed that means you are going to get different kind of truth so when we do the 3 day program we ask the people what do they think is truth and 100% of times they don't know ordinary people even if they are in spirituality since many years they don't know how to find the truth 
only those who have heard it a little bit somewhere from my videos or from read from some books have some knowledge of the scriptures they say that yes changing is the criteria change is the criteria but they parrot it they simply say it when we ask why changing is false why is that false then again they don't know so not knowing the criterion will always land you in falsehood not knowing this prevents people from knowing the truth this is a big problem because these things are never taught in your schools not even in college not even in the post graduate phd or about that how do i know this because i come in contact with people of all kinds from villagers to most educated people everybody fails and another interesting thing is when it is told that look changing is false nobody believes it and this is called the projection of the illusion the illusion prevents people or the minds from knowing what is true and there is a force there which does not allow any ordinary person to accept the truth and here is the importance of grace grace means that finally that intellect has reached a point where it can be smoothly bent in the other direction where it can finally turn to the truth by letting go of this belief in the ordinary truth in the ordinary criterion this is impossible by preaching by logic by debating impossible so it is possible only by the grace some people get it very quickly what is true what is not some people don't even if they are shown that look this is how it is they say yes it is all logical and intellectual but but for me the truth is whatever i see with my eyes or whatever is written in this book is true that means the mind is not ripe at this time and that means now that person must be left alone you should not uh, force the truth on this person because he will become either mad or violent or both so in the 3 day program we take three steps to reach uh, this understanding first we uh, show what is true on a worldly level day to day life what is true in our day to day life how do we decide what is true and it comes out very surprisingly that whatever is changing is not believed in day to day life also it is taken as false changing names changing cost changing statements changing behavior nobody trust these things then we go one step higher and we say how do highly intelligent people those who call, those who are called big people successful people or whatever how do they, how do they decide what is true and what is false and we give the example of a scientist a doctor and a lawyer and sometimes those who are money oriented <laughs> they are given an example of a successful businessman and again surprisingly same changing is not believed by highly intelligent highly educated civilized people although they may not know it clear- clearly but that is how they behave and then we take the final step what are the criteria in philosophy and again same thing comes out so it looks like there is a universal criterion there it is not made up by some crazy philosopher this is our direct experience and this is what our intellect tells any intelligent person will arrive at the same truth same criterion so that is why i said totally depends on the intelligence of the person it is very surprising that everything falls in the category of the false there you must have a open mind otherwise you fall back in the illusion the maya ensures that this will happen for 99% of the people about which we don't have any complaints we don't want to disturb the illusion the illusion needs these puppets who believe that everything they see is truth otherwise this whole thing will collapse the societies will collapse the humans will collapse the whole creation will come down because people found a way out of it the drama cannot continue like this so the maya allows handful of people out of a trap through an action through an event that is called grace you will come to know the truth only if that is allowed is not her wish then even if it is told to that person they won't recognize it they won't accept it they won't believe it they won't even hear it 
Why is that? Because the patterns in the universal memory, they have a tendency to preserve themselves. And obviously, telling these patterns that you are false is actually detrimental. It is harmful for their survival. So we are talking at the level of the most basic patterns that replicate and self-organize in our But the same is seen in the complex forms as below so above. So ordinary person resists any attempts of telling the truth. They don't want to hear it. And this happens in our 3D program and other programs also. In that 2 out of 10, they, they do not get it. There are some odd cases who will say, yes, I am the experiencer, but whatever I am seeing is also true. And that is a very good position actually. It's a compromise, but yes, no problem. Because at the highest level, the level of non-duality, there is no truth. And then nothing is false also. It simply is. The distinction of the true and false is creation of the mind. And that is also an illusion. Graham is saying maybe ordinary people are better actors than seekers. They know but they are unwilling to break character in the play. Yes, their time has not come actually. They need to play out their role first. For whatever illusory purpose they are serving here in the illusion, they need to do it, finish it. So they are not allowed. Or there is probably an internal knowing that probably this is the illusion. Yes, right. But they don't want to give it up. This is seen in many seekers also, that they go back in the illusion. Nothing wrong in that also. Where are you going to go? Where is there to go? Where will you go? The illusion is also you. So we also allow that because fully knowing that there is no way out of illusion, the only way is to know that this is an illusion and continue. The show must go on, but continue in the light of knowledge. This is the only teaching there is. Lead a simple, peaceful, pure life, fulfill your desires, help others, serve, light the lamps of knowledge everywhere and enjoy the illusion and then we should not worry about what is true and what is not. Because in the mind of an ordinary person, telling them that something is false leads to rejection, rejection of that thing. Not only for ordinary people, even the seekers, you know, they become the renunciates, monks, sannyasi, whatever. Because somebody told them everything is illusion. So rejection happens. You can see it in the common people also that, look, this product is not genuine. This product is a fake copy. And what do you do? You reject it. You don't buy it. You throw it away. Look, this person is a liar. Look, your husband is cheating with you. Divorce happens. We reject that which is branded as false. And that is why I said that as soon as people come to know that everything is false, what do, this whole thing will disappear. So the Maya ensures that somehow even if they come to know, they'll, they remain here. This is the projection ability of the illusion. Projection and the other ability, deception, whatever it's called. It is very good at it. She is very good in this matter. So we wait. We, we pick only those that can handle this immense conclusion that everything is false except you and yes people don't understand this much also <laughs> so and the job of a guru is a little bit difficult here suraj is saying at waking state there is illusion that i am body and mind in the dream i am one of the dream character even while watching a movie i become one of the characters of movie and feel the emotions of that character there is a question that why can't there be just witnessing without being attached with one of the character. It seems like it is necessary for the existence to have identification to perceive the experience. Is it really possible to be witness without being identified as one of the experience? Yes, it is possible. Many people are doing it. Why it is not possible for you? Probably there is some impurity somewhere. Probably there are unfulfilled desires. Probably this illusion is still very much interesting for you. There can be many reasons. And the biggest reason that I have seen is and the teachings are not yet embodied fully. You heard it. You are convinced about it. You have seen that I am the witness. But still there is some doubt somewhere. Just yesterday this question was there in the satsang and I said, Once you are told that you are a man, not a woman, how much practice will you need to remain as a man? Once you are told that you are the witness, how much practice will you need to remain as a witness? So it is possible and once you 
get past the hurdles the obstacles you will be able to remain in the witness state forever 24 by 7 without any break but yes for some people it may not happen immediately for some it can happen on the very first day like i said there has to be some kind of grace or some progress already for this this kind of miracle to happen and for some it does not really matter witnessing is not important for many people and there are many kinds of people many kinds of seekers so some will say even if i do this drama of being the witness nothing is gained in the end because what i am i am how this mind behaves attached or unattached is not my concern because that which is unattached is absolutely unattached eternally remember that is you the witness is never attached to anything the mind is attached to this thing or that thing and then it complains i am attached then it tries to leave the attachment <laughs> and then it falls in the trap again so a very intelligent person laughs at this drama of the mind probably suraj is very new so i am going to suggest that you try to be the witness nothing no harm in that it is not harmful practice isn't it and it does not take any time you need to only remember so try it don't uh, assume my words as ultimate no you need to find out you need to discover what works for you if it being the witness doing this witnessing mindfulness awareness practice is somehow beneficial for you then you must do it if it is not doing anything for you it is a you can say like a burden it does not give you any kind of pleasure happiness don't do it it's not compulsory and if you are a third kind of person who can actually understand that this witnessing practice and the desire to be the witness is actually part of the illusion you will let go probably there is a fourth kind who knows so find out your tendency and act accordingly and if your choice is one of these and you need help you should ask your guru very easy so it is not necessary for the existence to have the identification and it is not necessary for the existence to give up the identification these are imposed thoughts we should not impose our human tendencies on the whole existence it has no tendency at all it has no necessities it does not want to be this way or that way no there are no wants it is all mind once you know who you are the rest is mind which means rest is all illusion this is the bottom line now what do you want to do with it is your own personal choice you are most welcome to do that practice which makes you happy but it is not wise to worry about these things do that which comes naturally since it is all only the mother nature that brought you up to here with a little bit of help of the guru it will be mother nature who will take you beyond this the human has no agency <laughs> we don't do much the mind tries worries attempts struggles becomes happy becomes arrogant whatever it does is of no consequence so people ask me what practice do you do and i always lie depending on who is asking the truth is i never do any practice no practice at all why there is no practice on the path of knowledge practice means you are still ignorant the only practice is to know practice that to know is to be because there is nothing to know also isn't it simply be anjali is saying all the great masters have struggled a lot during their spiritual journey i feel that the struggle makes the knowledge stronger and unshakable but when one gets it without much struggle it can be shaken easily so isn't it important to struggle a bit just because of past karma that few people get it easily actually it is not important to struggle what happens is if you make efforts for it if you struggle for it then its value becomes more remember if you wanted to purchase something which is costly you need to earn it then you give it some value but if you get it without doing anything you will probably not pay much attention to it so it is not a matter of truth it is a matter of human psychology and uh, what is the truth in this statement that uh, all the great masters have struggled i don't think <laughs> i don't think so probably jesus christ is the uh, you can say 
very tragic example but his struggle happened after he got the knowledge not before there is another example gautam budh he struggled yes but he was a prince what kind of struggle no shankaracharya he was born with the knowledge i mean i am trying to find the great masters osho i don't think he struggled sitting near a tree all day is not called struggle if yes, the struggle is you see not knowing delay in knowing that can be called struggle you know you, you're not getting the proper guru you're not able to practice whatever is the reason that can be called struggle but uh, the fact is as soon as the seeker is ready the knowledge is served it is like going to the restaurant probably in the traffic there is a little bit of struggle probably you don't arrive on time and so on you see but as soon as you are sitting on the table you order your order food it is served no struggle so that is why when the student is ready everything is given to that student so probably you see if the student is ready without doing anything probably that person will not value that knowledge that much and such people are found to search for something bigger than non duality adwait or anything <laughs> that you they think is ultimate they start searching again and those who are intelligent they come to know very quickly that there is no point in searching now i got it so yes the value may not be recognized as soon as they get it and that is the that can happen sometimes so some gurus are very cunning in this matter they make the student run here and there from post to pillar before telling them even the basics because they can sense probably that this student will not value it sometimes i also do that very rarely what is done on the path of knowledge is the person is given the knowledge without any conditions unconditionally then the person is the student is left alone to do whatever he wants if you don't want to value it don't value it if it is of such a high value that you start crying after listening to this because you see probably for many lifetimes you were looking for this excellent why because these things are unimportant you see getting the knowledge is important if you don't want to value it who cares are you going to get anything better than this more valuable no then why waste time telling him that please value this thing <laughs> that this is the most valuable you are born for this this is the purpose of your life this is the purpose of human being this is the purpose of the whole existence that is appearing as a human to know itself probably they won't understand so we don't waste any time we know what will happen ultimately the value will be recognized and if it, if the value is recognized right now excellent the student is happy the guru is happy yes it depends on the personality of the guru they can make people suffer for a little bit of knowledge yes possible but uh, after this is revealed the student is forever grateful for this kind of drama that happened then he will see that it was not a struggle it was a drama so what is my method here is the knowledge take it don't like it okay no problem you see the seed seeding is important for me not the consequence like suraj was saying totally are important for me what happened to that student after his knowledge who cares is he back in the world who cares is there anywhere else to go nowhere because the path of knowledge does not give any importance to the progress of the creature we say mother nature will take care of it yes those who are interested they are lifted they are given a lift what do you call it in america we call it giving a lift in the car so seeding is the most important thing action on the path of knowledge the biggest success of the guru is to create another guru that will be the biggest success not putting the student into some kind of shame that look you don't have any value for this or not uh, sending the student on a lifelong practice of some kind torture you are not my student because you are not practicing no <laughs> never do that so you see many cases it will be seen that in the struggle that they did was not actually a struggle it they were some stepping stones they were the rungs of the ladder that they must climb to reach here those who think i have not done any struggle probably they have done their own struggle in many previous lifetimes there is a progress 
evolutionary path that takes you to the truth some people are well lucky they're born in the proper place they're born with uh, near a proper guru good environment sandesh is saying is osho good for beginners to get into spirituality what are your takes on his philosophy osho as is a little bit of a mixed bag he follows actually he does not follow any tradition or any path so my recommendation is always to pick up your specific path specific tradition and a guru on that tradition a guru belonging to that particular path so osho is good for beginners yes because the beginners have no path they have no idea of what is a path and they have no idea of what is a guru so what he does is he serves you all kinds of food spiritual food now according to your taste you must recognize what suits me isn't it he is doing the path of knowledge he is doing the kundalini he is in the yoga he is in the zen and he is also in the self improvement <laughs> little bit worldly advice jainism buddhism desism sufism he knows everything so you can get a overview of the spiritual scene the spiritual landscape from osho and similar people you see there are many like this who can speak on any topic and then you pick and choose one thing which attracts you most and that is your path then at that point you should take a proper systematic study get into systematic practice because how long can you listen to osho very attractive very mesmerizing talk but that is not a practice that is not a path keep listening to one fellow forever that's not the progress it is just like the bhagavad gita you see mixed bag of all the all the paths you know the truth is told there but nobody understands why because you see it takes a proper path a proper guru proper practice so my suggestion to sandesh is enjoy the talks see what attracts you most on what subjects you think he says you know the things he says are understood most that that's what you find interesting and then approach a living master whom you like who who teaches the same thing and try it try to walk properly on that path so why are these people like this and why are they so popular just like cricketers and uh, celebrities so we call them celebrity gurus <laughs> because they they are called the lok guru which means guru of the people they do not select they do not say that you are not my student and you are my student and you should do this practice and you should not do that practice they never say they accept everybody who comes to them because again their purpose is simply to make the spirituality popular their range is so wide that they speak from politics to psychology to science to advait everything so many uh, there are many students of osho and they have progressed but they have progressed only because they took a path vandita is saying just wanted to mention that in jain philosophy it is believed when wheel of karma responsible for blocking the knowledge is lifted then only one can get the knowledge they call it gyana varni karma yes they recognized it yes many traditions they recognize this thing with the event which uh, is like ripening of the fruit you cannot pick the fruit before it is ripe you cannot eat it so we wait for the right person to show up right student the guru field is eternally waiting they have nothing else to do as soon as they find a ripe fruit then something some arrangements are made so that that student is properly guided gram is saying i feel a few others in the program are like gurus to me they have been there to serve and guide so freely and openly and kindly i guess that is your intention yes that is every guru's intention that um they there has to be you know they think they wish that this um chain of teachers should continue somehow and obviously we don't need to do that much hard work again it's a matter of simply picking the right person and that person is given some instructions and i check what they're doing <laughs> that's all so those who with the qualities those with the potential to become the guru they are guided further and i encourage yes actually i encourage those also who do not have the qualities because even a little bit of service is good enough good for the people and actually it is 
ten times better for the person who is serving. So the person who is serving is benefited more than the person who is served. This is the lure in this field that it is in your advantage to impart the knowledge or whatever has been told. You get the fruit. You get most of it. And yes, the other people they also are benefited. So this is the only action which can be called the win-win situation. Both parties win here. It is not a give and take that one person loses something, the other gains something. It is never like this. The job of the spiritual service, both parties get paid. So how will you know this? You will know this only by doing this. Only that you know you should not do it too much because it can become like a addiction. That I need to cut. I need to preach everybody. I need to teach everybody. I need to do something big because there is there are too many ignorant people in the world. You see, when these thoughts they come in the mind, and that that means some trouble. That fellow is going to cause some trouble now. So that is why permission of the guru is needed. Anyhow, some people go ahead without permission, <laughs> and they learn in the hard way how to do it. So permission is all also not like this. Don't do it. No, it is never like this. Very rare cases. It is always like this. Look, if you do this, there will be this consequence. If you do that, there will be that consequence. This is what we call as permission. Then the student must be intelligent enough to do something and not do something. So the living guru is actually copy of the guru field. Just like the guru field is waiting and provides the help at the right time, this living guru is also waiting, provides the right help, whatever. he or she can to the right person this much is the service nothing more needs to be done it will appear like a difficult job to some people only because they are trying to serve somebody who does not want to be served they are trying to feed somebody who is not hungry and then it will be a very tough job but we do that also sometimes you see in hopes that probably that is an obstacle and i'll do something you know i'll give my 100% to this fellow so that he goes past that obstacle we do these things but it should be taken as a play we should not become serious about this and before interfering in the lives of the students they must be given the basic knowledge the seeding is the important part and then there is all play mandita is asking fakeness is a behavioral impurity but sometimes it is absolutely needed how to deal with this conflict it is very easy if that lie that fakeness that drama pretension is beneficial for you and for others then it is good you can say it is moral ethical if it is causing any kind of harm then it's not good conflict will be solved like this and this should be seen in the long term not the short term i'm pretending like this i'm faking it like this is it going to be good in the long term ultimately then you should do it otherwise not if it has a short term effect but the problem is not solved by that then better to be genuine true you will recognize very quickly that you had to fake something you had to lie you had to pretend because you yourself are responsible for that situation like we say it is your karma you are in that situation where you have to do this M- means that some something wrong happened in previous time in the past now you want to get out of that situation so yes check that nobody is getting harmed if the harm is small for example that person can feel a little bit of sadness etc etc then it's okay <laughs> but if the harm is big for example some loss of money something like this you should not do it wait for the right moment so what is the correct way do not land in this in a situation where you need to lie be straight forward from the first day now we are all not lucky that you know that lucky nobody taught it taught us these things we just behaved in a instinct way and then we landed up in a in these situations and now we need to find some ways out So the lesson that is learned is always tell the truth, <laughs> so that you don't land in a situation. Always do that is necessary. 
just now i posted a video where, where francis said a very beautiful phrase very beautiful sentence the law of least action <laughs> that is what we mean when we say do only the necessary law of least action if you need to pretend do as less as possible bring the truth out as quickly as you can there will be consequences yes but uh, you know there is something called hard landing and soft landing so lying can convert landing into a soft landing but yes there will be consequences i'll give an example of faking lying that can be beneficial it happens a lot uh, in this country let us say somebody's child dies in an accident so this is the truth that the child died but when you call his mother you what do you say i your child fell down somehow and he's crying you need to come back home and the mother comes back home where is my child oh he was a little bit injured he was taken to the hospital you go to this hospital still they are not telling her but one step more you see the news is broken in steps goes in the hospital doctor says oh he is a little bit more injured so he is in the operation theater icu emergency room wherever please wait here for one hour <laughs> and then everybody arrives you know mother sister mother's mother husband family there is a crowd now and then somebody says we could not save your child because by the time the mother has gone through a lot of initial suffering or then she is mentally prepared for the news so isn't this bad isn't this lying isn't this fakeness yes but uh, the suffering is there you see the consequences are there nothing has changed but only thing is that we made it a little bit softer at least we tried this is what we do and sometimes this is done for um, good news also like i know of some cases where some people were told that you won a lottery this many crores this many millions and they died of heart attack <laughs> i heard these things so depending on the strength of the person good news is also not revealed quickly so they will be told look you you earned 1000 rupees in the lottery why don't you check so by the time <laughs> he is mentally prepared for the that news so in this way if the situation is like this which can be eased by lying then that should be done otherwise not sandesh is asking is there any practice or way to observe the observer and is that the same you referring to sakshi bhav yes you can call it the awareness practice or the sakshi bhav and obviously you will realize that there is no way to observe the observer it's not possible it is only possible to know that i am the observer so that is the practice to remain in this knowledge what will happen if you don't remain in this knowledge nothing will happen <laughs> the observer observer is always present eternally this human is like a speck of dirt for observer and like a flash in the pan i blink so this practice should not be given that much importance just like i said just now i said this i think but if the, this human being is benefited in some way that look this is so fantastic wonderful experience to remain in the knowledge of who am i very nice go ahead enjoy what is most important is you see you realize the truth and live a simple life it will be made known to you whenever there is a need you know the example of uh, hot pan is very beautiful you touch the hot pan you learn not to touch it again but you don't remember it all the time look i touch the hot pan look it was so hot i should not touch it you you do not chant this mantra all the, all day for years no next time you see the hot pan you remember yes i should not touch it or even if you see the cold pan you just make sure that it is not hot it is not on the fire that much you ensure isn't that simple isn't that natural so whenever there is a need you drop your identity as the human when there is a need you assume the identity as human that is intelligence in my opinion although it totally depends on the seeker you know what do they want what is the what is their wish it is only practice of remembering remembering and it is prescribed to only those who tend to forget 
Now the guru gets irritated. What did I tell you? Who are you? Oh, sorry, I, I forgot. Okay, now do the practice. <laughs> write down 100 times you are the sakshi you are the witness you are the experience every day 100 times so in very poor cases this practice will be prescribed it is there as a part of the program the program we are doing and the intention there is you know to make you familiar with this practice that look there is such a practice do you want to do it okay do it for 3 months then i never ask you how is it going no i never ask you and then it is given for another reason that probably you will become a guru yourself you know probably you are interested so now you have the training to train somebody else in this akshi bhav so nothing is done in this program which is unnecessary in law of least action yes follow it lakshmi is asking what is simple in satvik life where you live in such a way that uh, your karmic balance is reduced in, instead of increasing that is one way that which is causing suffering to you and to the others should be dropped immediately that which is excess should be dropped immediately and that which is pleasing too much you see like you are attached to these those things that should be dropped gradually when your desires are fulfilled to some extent then you will see that your life is very simple and that will be called a satvik life satvik means based on truth you know satya satvik comes from satya so how how can this be done and that is what is called a spiritual life actually it is done by leaving not by gaining it is done by letting go not by taking on and that is why it is difficult isn't it <laughs> let go let go of that which is easy for you isn't it first things you should let go of those things which can be done easily you see if it can be done easily let go of that and you know what can be done easily that the, the things that are causing suffering you don't want them already simplify by letting go i don't want that no concern then you let go of unnecessary which is happening is not causing suffering but it's totally unnecessary like buying more stuff eating more sleeping more talking more more relatives you start chopping them down like cutting the trees you know and you keep the bare minimum by the time you are ready to leave this physical world you will be so light that you will be simply you'll simply float out of the world poetically if you have the burdens on you like rocks tied to you you won't be even able to walk and you'll drop back here next birth with the same burden I think that is the teaching in every path not only the path of knowledge actually the path of knowledge recommends nothing because we know what is the consequence of knowledge as a consequence your life turns into something simple and satvik ordinary nothing extraordinary even if you become a servant of knowledge even if you become a guru you will remain ordinary although the people are going to project you <laughs> is something divine or great don't worry let them do whatever they want to do you remain ordinary you remain simple some people have dropped so much that all they have is a pair of shirts clothes and slippers and a wooden pot they drink in that pot they eat in that pot and they take bath in that using that pot pot and these people are called the sanyasis so hopefully you will become like that but there is no need to do that kind of extreme because the attachment is in the mind your physical appearance and whatever you possess may not be a good reflection of detachment so some people pretend to be sanyasis but there is a lot of attachments a lot of stuff in their minds you see the karmic stuff is not yet over but yes they are doing something they are doing some effort probably their path demands this kind of action but on the path of knowledge you enjoy your life <laughs> but keep your mind clean should not be attached should not be attached to whatever you this thing is enjoying this creature so you should keep checking can i live without this thing and yes if you can live without that thing happily then you are detached and if that concerns you that bothers you that troubles you this thing is not this one thing is not there and that means there is attachment there is expectation 
and now you work on it and you don't need to force do it naturally beautifully properly lovingly like a play and you will improve jay is saying in one audio sadguru said one can change their genetic makeup in matter of months as we know that anything is possible in illusion but still apart from that what are your thoughts on it yes yes anything is possible in the illusion and those who know how to do it it will be done it is possible how will you know and the key is knowledge what is this thing what is the genetic makeup who is there to change it who who can do it what kind of progress is needed what kind of spiritual attainment is needed to do that and then long practice and you will do it and on the path of knowledge we will let that which is because we know it is perfect and we progress forward the progress happens by leaving behind the use is over you leave it behind and probably there are other paths where you try to manipulate whatever you think is not good enough my genetics is not good enough <laughs> that means there is a long path now you will remain trapped here fixing the genes no problem whatever you like on the path of knowledge the progress is very fast like rocket on other paths they are busy doing something else which is totally unnecessary vandita is saying it is referred as aparigraha means non grasping or non attachment this yama teaches us to practice moderation taking only what we need keeping only what serves us in the moment and letting go if necessary yes the same thing will be called pratyahar in ashtanga yoga and we call it doing the necessary letting go or like he said the law of least action that will make your life um, simple and satvik happy unburdened actually it will be so much pleasure that you will look forward to this time of death where finally the last thing will be there will be last you know letting go happens at the time of death what is that this body don't want this now <laughs> it's unnecessary isn't it so that is the ultimate pleasure that is the moment of rapture and just now he mentioned sadguru sadguru has also mentioned this thing that your moment of liberation is actually your moment of death or your moment of death is your moment of liberation now you understand why you know if you have led a good life spiritual life which means this life which we are talking about of subtracting of dissolving then your death will be moment of liberation otherwise no <laughs> otherwise it's a torture it's a suffering it's a loss and remember how do people see the death that is right for them it is not a moment of liberation or joy it is a tragedy for ordinary people or ordinary seekers but those who have led a good life life of knowledge and fulfillment they are looking forward to that time you know like you are traveling in a car and the destination is far away initially you enjoy the journey you know the music is playing in the car and car is speeding you get to see a lot of things out of the window but after 2 3 hours what happens oh my back is paining <laughs> my leg is paining i need to go to bathroom <laughs> it becomes a torture now you look forward to the moment when you'll fi- finally arrive get out of the car that is leaving your vehicle is your pleasure now same way live your life in such a way that leaving the vehicle this body becomes a pleasure for you that is possible only by knowledge only by proper application of that knowledge in your life be kissing knowledge is the enemy of death knowledge is the enemy of love human beings must experience what it means to die through living yes very good so everybody should think about this if this is not your prarabdh make it your prarabdh who is stopping you give your life a goal this is the highest goal possible surprisingly it is leaving 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 tyag not gain <laughs> you don't need to gain anything that which you gained is the problem that is the burden that is the ignorance you are whole and complete that is the knowledge so here we'll end our satsang hopefully everybody benefited and i'll see you next time